Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, hope you are doing all right. And thank you for coming in for another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to do focus stacking in Photoshop. I was reprocessing a photo that I took in California and I just realized it would be a great example to show you how to do focus stacking in Photoshop. So first of all, what is focus stacking and why would you want to use focus stacking? When shooting landscape photography, sometimes you will find that the foreground object is very, very close to your camera and the middle ground or the background is far away behind. Even if you shoot at a small aperture such as f8 or f11 on a full frame camera, you still find you can't get the entire depth of field in focus which means if you focus on the foreground, then you will notice the middle ground or the background might be a little bit out of focus. And if you focus on the middle ground or the background, then you will notice the foreground is a little bit out of focus. So you can't get everything in focus in one shot. So how do you resolve this issue? Basically, you can focus on the foreground first and then capture a photo. And you know in that photo, the foreground is in focus. And then you move on to focus on the middle ground to capture another photo. So you know the middle ground is in focus. And then you move on to focus on the background and then capture another photo. So you know the background is in focus. So now you have multiple photos. And now in post-processing, you can use this technique called focus stacking to combine all those photos together. You can pick the part which is in focus from each photo and combine them together, stitch them together so that you can create a photo that is sharp throughout the foreground to the background. Focus stacking might be easier than you think. You don't have to do any manual stitch. Um, all you need to do is just click, click some buttons in Photoshop and boom, Photoshop will generate a uh, stitch the photo for you automatically. So that's very convenient. And I will show you an example. And also before we dive into the details, I want to mention that currently Capture One is doing a massive discount for Fuji users and Sony users. If you are interested in Capture One Pro for Fuji or Capture One Pro for Sony, now you can get those licenses for 50% less. And this promotion runs until March 31st, 2019. So if you are interested in Capture One for Sony or Capture One for Fuji, this is a great time because you can save half of the total cost. Check out the link at mcai.info slash c1 underscore Fuji and mcai.info slash c1 underscore Sony. Now let's jump into the example. All right, right now I'm inside Photoshop and I have some photos for this example. The first photo is this one. And I know the first photo I focused on the rocks in the foreground. So let's zoom into 100% scale. And as you can see, the rock in the foreground is in focus and they appear sharp. But if I move the frame further to the middle ground, as you can see, the rock over here is already a little bit blurry, this rock right here. I can, I think I can draw here. You see the rock here is a, a slightly out of focus. And if I move on to the background, the mountains over here, you can see the mountain is out of focus. That's the first photo because I focused on the foreground. So my middle ground and the background is a little bit out of focus, even though I used a small aperture F8 on my Fuji X-T2. So this is APS-C sensor F8 is probably equivalent to something like F11 on full frame, but still you can't get the entire thing to be in focus. Now let me jump to the last photo because in the last photo, I moved the focus all the way to the background. So now I zoom in, you can see this is the mountain and it is in focus and it is sharp. Uh, I can do a comparison. So the photo on the left hand side is the one I focused on the foreground and the one on the right hand side is the one I focused on the background. As you can see, in the photo on the right hand side of the mountain is much sharper than the photo on the left hand side. But if we move to the foreground, let's see. 
Now you can see the foreground, the photo on the left hand side is much sharper than the photo on the right hand side because when I focus on the background, the foreground is out of focus. Now what we need to do is combine all these six photos, sorry, five photos together so I can create a photo that is sharp from the foreground all the way to the background. Now before I take all these photos into Photoshop, I would uh, first make some basic adjustments in Capture One. And the first thing I noticed the highlight is blown out. So I'm going to go to the high dynamic range tool and I'm going to reduce the highlight. And I'm going to click on this A button of this levels tool to set black point, white point automatically. And I usually would push this black point further in a little bit and move this midpoint towards the left hand side a little bit to add some more contrast. And now overall, I think the photo is too dark. I'm going to use this brightness slider. I'm going to push this up a little bit. That's probably too much, maybe like that. And then change the black point. I want it to be a little bit further. Okay, now I want to change the Y balance because this is a sunset photo. I want to, I want this photo to look more look warmer. So I'm gonna going to use this white balance tool, change it to maybe somewhere around, let's see, 5700 and add a little bit magenta into this photo. All right, now that looks good. Now I'm going to copy these adjustments and paste to all the other photos. So what you need to do is click on this copy adjustments button and then select all the other photos and click on this paste adjustments button. And now you have everything synced. Now you can select all these five photos and the right click and go to edit with and go to Adobe Photoshop. And I would recommend it to use TIFF 16 bit uncompressed and adjustments. I would say no output sharpening and then click on open. Okay, now we are inside the Photoshop and we have five photos open. And the first thing we want to do is move everything to one tab. Um, so I'm gonna select the second tab and then I'm going to use Control A or Command A for a Mac and then Control C or Command C to copy and then go to the first tab and then Control V or Command V to paste. So as you can see, now I have two layers under this tab. Now go to the third photo, do the same thing, select the photo, copy, go to the first frame, paste. And now we have three layers right now. And then go to the fourth, select the photo, copy, go to the first, paste, and go to the fifth, select everything, copy, go to the first, and then paste. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, all five photos in one place. I'm gonna click on this lock to unlock this layer. And now we can just close the other photos. Now what you need to do is select all these five layers and then you can go to edit, go to auto align layers. I would recommend to do auto align before you do focus stacking and you can select auto. I think auto does a pretty good job and then click on OK. All right, it's been auto aligned. And now keep all these layers selected and then go to edit, go to auto blend layers. And you want to select stack images and I will recommend it to also check seamless tones and colors and then click on OK. All right, now Photoshop just automatically stacked all your layers. And as you can see, it creates a layer mask for each photo. You can go through each of them if you want to see which part is used from that photo. Now let's take a look. Let me grab the zoom tool. Let's go to 100% scale. And you can see 
the mountain is in focus, it is sharp. And let's move to the foreground, which also looks good. All right, I'm gonna back to fit screen. Now, as you can see, it seems we have some empty space around the edge. Okay, so it looks like we have some empty space around this edge. So I'm gonna crop this photo just a little bit. Select the crop tool and the original ratio. And I'm going to just crop in a little bit to get rid of the empty space around the edge. All right, that looks good. Okay, now we get rid of the empty space on the edge. And now I can use Control, Alt, Shift, and E to make a new uh, layer. And then I don't need all the previous layers. I can just grab those and then remove those. Now I can save this file. I can go to File and then Save. And I don't need layers, so I will select discard layers and then save a copy like that and then click on OK. All right, now we are back in Capture One and this is the merge photo. And you can see the foreground right here is nice and sharp. And we can move this towards the background and it's, it is also nice and sharp. All right, now I can finish this photo in Capture One. I can go to uh, the Layers tool. I want to create a new layer. And then I can grab the Graduate uh, graduate Mask tool, and then I can select a Graduate Mask from the sky because I want to darken the sky a little bit further, maybe like that. And, and then I will reduce the brightness a little bit. This is before, this is after. And I think I'm going to raise the saturation a little bit. Okay. And then I can add a little bit of vignetting to the entire photo. Okay, also I want to make the sky a little bit uh, saturated. So I can use this advanced color tool. I can grab this picker, uh, pick a color from the mask, and then I can increase the saturation a little bit. Well, actually, I'm going to create a new graduate mask. And this time I'm going to Oops, sorry, wrong mask. Create a new one, grab the graduate mask. Yes, that's the one. All right, about that. And then I'm going to use the advanced color tool, grab a picker, pick a color. Now I can increase some saturation only to the sky. and maybe darken the sky further. Okay. All right, now you guys know how to do focus stacking in Photoshop. All right guys, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below and feel free to share with your friends. And if you are the first time on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing for more photography tutorials. And also if you're interested in Capture One, check out those links. And remember, currently Capture One is doing a massive discount for Fuji users and Sony users. Now you can get Capture One for Fuji and Capture One for Sony for 50% less. All right guys, enjoy photography. See you next time. Bye.